we are back with another video and today we are going to be talking about why we switched from python to go now i personally didn't switch from python to go but thierry schellenbach uh, wrote an article about how his company stream switched from python to go and you might be wondering why are we even talking about the difference and i think it's pretty important because you what you can do in Python, a lot of it you can do in Go as well, but they're two completely different languages, right? Python is a dynamically typed interpreted language where Go is actually the statically typed compiled language and those kind of clash. And a lot of people are like, why are you writing Python? It's not scalable, it's super slow, use Go. And I think there's a lot of validity to that and we're gonna talk about some of those differentiators. However, if you are learning Python, don't take this as a, I must go learn Go. It's super important to note that it's just more important that you it's super important to note that you should just go build something and that's how you're going to learn the most right if you spend your whole life being like i should learn go versus python or what about rust i heard about rust primogen said rust then you're going to get stuck in this analysis paralysis loop and you're never going to learn anything or get anything done if you want to learn python go learn python maybe you have a use case maybe you want to do some web scraping maybe you want to learn flask maybe you use it at your job maybe you're doing data interpretation whatever it is learn python go for it you're going to learn a lot you're going to learn the basics it's going to be really cool but go is pretty cool too and we're going to talk about that so in this video we're breaking down Terry's article he says, switching to a new language is always a big step, especially when only one of your team members has prior experience with that language. Early this year, we switched Stream's primary uh, programming language from Python to Go. What the heck is Stream, Terry? And I hear that is APIs and SDKs to build in-app chat video and feeds. So it's like real-time community engagement on your streams, but it's done through APIs and stuff. Pretty cool. Okay, so the reason number one is performance. Go is fast. Go is extremely fast. The performance is similar to that of Java or C++. <laughs> okay, for our use case, Go is typically 40 times faster than Python. I believe that. Um, I'm sure they've done the benchmarking, so let's just trust them. No, I'm kidding, but really Go is gonna be faster than Python in a lot of cases. I actually built out this example of how Go is faster than Python by using the sum of squares. You don't know what sum of squares is. It's like one squared is one, add that to the sum, two squared, is four, add that to the sum of one, five, three squared is nine, add that to the sum of five, you get 14, and then you just keep going. Now, we did it to be up to five million. So that's quite a bit of numbers that it's exponentially growing and adding and multiplying. So let's run this side by side in Go versus Python and see what the difference is. So if we do go run uh, sum of, oh my gosh, sum squares go, Aha, 2.2 milliseconds. Python 3, 0.175466 seconds, which is 175 milliseconds. So what is 175, 175 divided by 2.2? 79 times faster. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I get Terry does have some validity in what he's saying with the 40 times faster. Oh my gosh, I blew that. I almost doubled that. I almost did 80 times better, right? But this is just a very simple example. Um, if you were to do this uh, more scoped out and at scale, such as like reading a thousand or a million CSV lines or pulling data from a database in such a large quantity, you're gonna see that Python is gonna be slower on average than something like Go, right? Because of the nature of how Go works. And we taught, and I believe if we scroll down here, he talks about this in this article where he says fast compile time. Now you can see that our largest microservice written in Go currently takes four seconds to compile, pretty gnarly. Go's fast compile times are a major productivity win compared to languages like Java and C++, which are famous for sluggish compilation speed. I didn't know that. Someone comment if that's true. I want to fact check that. I like sword fighting, but it's even nicer to get things done while I still remember what the code is supposed to do. Okay, that's pretty cool. But I actually built a diagram around, uh, around compiled versus interpreted. And I don't even know if this is like 100% encapsulating 
what compiled versus interpreted does, but this is kind of my knowledge of it. Where we have a Go program, which is our source code, the compiler does a lot of lexical analysis, does a lot of magic and converts that source code into machine code, which is zeros and ones. It then spits out that machine code into an executable binary, which is our program. You run that program and then things happen, but it does it before runtime. So you're not compiling things at runtime, you're doing it beforehand, which makes it a lot faster. Now, I guess when he says in the article that it takes four seconds to compile, it would be happening at this step. So it takes four seconds for it to go from the Go program to the binary. Now interpret it like Python or JavaScript, or I think Java is even interpreted. I'm not a big Java guy, so someone would have to correct me because I'm sure the JVM stuff works a little bit different. But you have your Python program, which is your source code, you run it, and then it does a bunch of magic and pretty much goes line by line and breaks that up and then does some stuff with it, and then you get your output. So it's less efficient because it does it at runtime versus doing it beforehand. So you'd probably want to go with something like compiled language, Go, versus Python for speed and efficiency, right? Now, he does go on to list a few other things like reason six, the ability to build a team, and that 38% uh, of developers know Java, 19 know C++, and only 4.6 know Go. Um, and I feel like this is kind of an interesting, interesting take because when was this written? That's a better question. 2021, Go has grown quite a bit, and especially with cloud native, um, and the fact that everything's kind of in the cloud, Kubernetes was written in it. I believe Docker was written in Go. There's so much more support now than ever for it in 2024. I I'd be interested to see the numbers now. There is a strong ecosystem. I started programming in a Go just a few weeks back, really learning the language, the syntax, kind of what makes it beautiful, especially things like Go routines. And if you're curious what a Go routine is, um, let's just take this basic program, for example. We are introducing my pets, Remy and Patsy. We're looping over 10 times in this introduce function and you'll see what this looks like, right? So if I run this go run routine.go, it's gonna output Remy 10 times, Patsy 10 times, right? But go allows you to run programs in concurrency. So if we do go run routine.go, you're gonna see that now it runs kind of staggered. And you might be saying, why does it do that, right? Well, it's because Go routines, like I said, run in concurrency. So if you're curious what concurrency is, you can kind of look at it like, let's say you have to eat and sing at the same time, or like eat and hum or eat and whistle, right? You can't do those at the same time, but you can do those kind of in some sort of order. So you might eat half the cake, whistle a little bit or sing, eat a quarter of the cake, then continue and go back and forth and do those things is what kind of concurrency does, right? The order of which it happens is pretty random, but ultimately it's computing and achieving multiple tasks kind of at the same time, um, which is a little bit more efficient. Actually, I don't know if I want to say a little bit more efficient, probably a lot. And I actually wrote the sum of squares routine or program in a Go routine uh, manner. So you can see I use channels here as well, which allow you to kind of sync up concurrent processes. So if we ran go run uh, some squares, you'll see now that this is microseconds. So compared to when we were doing go run some squares go, which was milliseconds, now we're talking microseconds, which geez, that's even better. So you scale that out, now we got even faster programs. Not even compiled is the is the main advantage. It's also the fact that we have this concurrency um, and Go routines. I will say the disadvantage, I agree with this one. There's a lack of frameworks here. So if you're doing something like Python for web dev or JavaScript or any of these interpreted languages, at least they have like pretty set in stone frameworks like Django, uh, Ruby has Ruby on Rails, uh, Python also has Flask, right? And you have a lot of these frameworks that do this kind of scaffolding and magic for you. Go doesn't really have that. Go routes have been really improved in terms of how to build APIs. So 
I will talk about that in another video, which I thought was really cool when learning Go. But what I also think is a disadvantage to Go is error handling. You're right. So if you want to do something, um, let's just take like a basic example. Like let's say you want your value and your error and you want to do like um, request dot get or something like that. Let's just take this. This isn't actually how you do it in Go. But let's say you have that. Then you would have to do like if error does not equal nil, uh, throw an error, right? And you have to do that for every time you go and get a value, which is a huge pain in the ass. Where like in Python, you can do error handling with like exceptions, which is really cool, or exception handling, try catch, that kind of deal. Uh, Go is a little bit more bare bones in that way. Um, and then package management, I don't know. This is an interesting take. Uh, Go's package management has come a long way since this post was written. Go modules are an effective solution. The only issue I've seen with them is that they break some static analysis tools like error check. Here's a tutorial for learning to use Go using Go modules. I thought I think Go modules is pretty cool, at least in 2024. I don't know how it was in 2021. Anthony GG, you might be able to chime in here and tell me a little bit about how it was in the early days. But I do think that uh, Go mod is pretty cool. Um, so far, I've had no issues with it, and I haven't used it to probably the full extent. So I wouldn't be able to tell you what the uh, disadvantages are. But overall, I think pretty good article, at least coming from a Go newbie. Um, if I was had a ton more background in Go, I'd probably be able to pick these up apart a little bit more. But I do think that off grip, some things we should probably just talk about real quick is that Go is compiled, Python's interpreted, Go is gonna be faster than Python because it's compiled versus interpreted, right? On top of that, I do think a lot of the stuff you can do in Python, you can do in Go. So porting over from one to the other is not crazy difficult. And I think you can also do like C Python maybe to do that um, as well to assist you there. I'd have to look into that more. And then on top of that, I do think that Go routines and channels and being able to run things concurrently on different CPU cores is super cool within Go. And if you want to learn more about that, there's some great videos. I'll link them below. But like Jake Wright is a great person um, to learn from. And then I also think that there's a lot of other great resources out there. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.